And generally, if you see someone um, being you know, negative about ETFs or really having a go at them, my general sense is most of these people have a lot to lose because they're on the active investing side and their own businesses are suffering as a result of the huge benefit that ETFs and indexing are passing on to consumers. Hey, this is Chris from Stockspot, Australia's largest online investment advisor. And in this video, I'm gonna be tackling a common misconception that I see repeated over and over again, and that is that ETFs or indexing is causing some sort of market bubble or bubble in technology stocks. And I wanna dispel this by showing in a few different ways why this isn't the case. And the first one is that it is quite clear that even within the big indices, the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, these big indices that ETFs follow, that it's actually fundamentals, um, active investors buying and selling that are driving share prices. So already this year, we're a few months into 2024, within the big indices, the big stocks have had huge divergences in their returns. You've had companies like Nvidia up 90%, and at the same time, companies like Tesla down 35%. And this isn't because indexing is all driving all stocks to move in the same direction. It's because fundamentally one company is doing well and the active people buying and selling are betting that that company is gonna do well. And one company has been downgrading earnings and not doing well. And ultimately 95% of trading in markets is active traders and active investors buying and selling between each other because index ETFs don't do a lot of buying and selling. They just buy and hold. And that is my second point, which is that ETFs and index funds aren't price makers, they're price takers. If share prices go up, an index fund actually doesn't need to do any more buying at all because all of the constituents of that ETF are already in the right proportions. And so ETFs aren't the ones actually causing prices to move. They just piggyback off all the hard work that everyone else is already doing on the active investing side and give the owners of that index fund the market return. So they're actually not having much impact at all on price discovery. And in fact, there's been a lot of research that's been done to understand, well, how much of the world would ETFs or index funds need to own to have an impact? And those studies have generally found that they would need to own something like 90% of the market before those index funds actually had an impact on the prices themselves. And this to me is the clearest evidence that ETFs aren't causing a bubble, they aren't causing stocks to go up or down. Um, they're just a way of getting access to markets and actually it's fundamentals that are doing it. You know, the other great evidence I would say is that look back in history. So pre-ETFs existing, you know, in the 1990s before they were popular or anyone really owned them, we had the same ups and downs in sectors and in markets in the technology sector. And actually it's the psychology of people and people's fear and greed that it's actually driving certain sectors of the market to go up or down. It has nothing to do with the actual um, way people get exposure to those markets. And in the past that might've been individual shares or mutual funds or managed funds. Today it's ETFs. These are just the conduits for people to access the underlying companies. But actually history tells us that Sectors go up and down, sectors go through bubbles, sectors go through busts. It has nothing to do with the actual way people are getting exposure. It's more about the psychology of large groups of people uh, wanting to get exposure to certain sectors at the same time. Um, and that, in my mind, are some of the clearest reasons why ETFs you know, shouldn't be the ones to blame for assets going up and down. They're certainly not causing a bubble in technology stocks or markets. In fact, um, the exact same thing that we're seeing now has happened time and time again over the last hundreds and hundreds of years of markets existing. ETFs are just a simple and cost-effective way of getting access to underlying shares. Um, and generally, if you see someone um, being you know, negative about ETFs or really having a go at them, my general sense is most of these people have a lot to lose because they're on the active investing side and their own businesses are suffering as a result of the huge benefit that ETFs and indexing are passing on to consumers. If you like this video or are interested in investing in general, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like.